Before we proceed, let's look at this man. He is known as Albert von Graffi and he is the father of ophthalmology. He is the father of the subject that we are going to be studying today. His name is Albert von Graffi and famously we know that there exists a sign called the von Graffi sign. This can be your question, please remember. That's the reason I'm telling this. The von Graffi sign is nothing but the lid lag that is present in hyperthyroidism. As you can see here, when the patient is looking up in this picture, these uh, lids appear normal. However, when he's looking down in this image, you can see that this eyelid, the upper eyelid is going down uh, along with the eyeball, but this on the right side, the upper eyelid is not going downwards. This is known as the lid lag and one graphy sign. And there is another junior to this sign, we will call it the pseudo von Graffi sign. It is seen in aberrant third nerve regeneration. That is, when the third nerve is um, subjected to trauma and it is cut off, it does regenerate, but it goes and innovates the wrong site and hence causes this sign known as pseudo von Graffi sign. Please remember these points. Now, let us get into our subject proper. To start, let's start with the orbit that is the outermost bony protection of the eye. Okay. So, this structure which you are seeing is the orbit which contains our eyes and the volume of each orbit is 30 ml. That is the capacity of the orbit on each side is 30 ml. However, the eyeball occupies only 6 ml of the orbit. You see the eyeball, the entire volume of the eyeball is only 6 ml. So, it is a very small structure compared to the size of the orbit and hence you will obviously need something to suspend it within the cavity and to keep it in its place. Hence, it has 7 attachments for this very purpose. Okay. So, these are nothing but your extraocular muscles, extraocular muscles, 6 of them the recti and the obliques and the one nerve that is the optic nerve. So, these are the seven attachments which keep the eyeball in the orbit. Now, let us learn about this complicated image that you are seeing over here. Okay. So, the first thing is these are the lateral walls of the orbit okay. and as you can see the angle between the lateral walls is perpendicular that is they are perpendicular to each other that and they form a, an angle of 90 degrees okay now let us look at this this is the medial wall medial okay and this is the lateral wall so the angle between the medial wall and the lateral wall is half of the angle between the two lateral walls and it is about 45 degrees as you can see over here the angle is 45 degrees and it is perfectly bifurcated by the optic nerve to give us an angle of 23 degrees each. So, this will be 23 degrees. So, am I clear on this? Both the lateral walls form an angle of 90 degrees and on each side the orbit forms with the medial wall and the lateral wall 45 degrees of angle and then the optic nerve bifurcates this 45 degrees and of the angle and gives us 23 degrees on either side. Okay. Then, however, if you see these two medial walls are parallel to each other. That is evident from your image. The medial walls are parallel to each other. Now, we have seen that the um, or eyeball is suspended within the orbit with the help of optic nerve behind which attaches to the brain posteriorly and to the eyeball anteriorly. Okay, That is the optic nerve, the yellow colored structure that you are seeing all over here. This is your optic nerve. Posteriorly, it is attached to the brain and anteriorly to your eyeball. Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sai Suguna, your mentor for ophthalmology at Medicoab. 
Now, thanks for watching the video. Now, we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app. The trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below.